Hey everybody, me, uh, Fog of War videos here, finally, after a week. Sorry about that, I know I said it was going to come in the weekend before, right when I released an 8 minute video, but I realized that Tabletop decided they were going to do an update, and I heard rumors that the update was also going to have Fog of War changes in it. I really didn't want my video to go out of date 3 days, 2 or 3 days after I released it, so I decided to wait. It turns out they did do Fog of War changes. They fixed a couple of the bugs in it. They didn't fix everything, but they did fix a couple of the bugs. So I had to scrap that entire edited video and make a new one. This is the new one. Not edited because I can't be bothered to do that again. That, that sucked. I lost. Ugh, that was so much effort for no reason. Um, let me fix my mic. It's a bit too close. There we go. All right. Um, so it's the Fog of War video. I'm going to be going over, so I'm going to, I'm going to do the basics of the video. This is the very basics of how Fog of War works. I'll show you a couple of cool tricks, how I use Fog of War and some of the problems that Fog of War has and what to kind of like dodge, like swerve away from, but let's get right into it. Hi. So let me fix this. That's the wrong one. <laughs> Uh, I'm so good at videos. I don't know why I don't have like a million subscribers already. I am so good at this. Nope, that's still... Nope, nope, nope. There we go. I did it. I'm a professional. Alright, so let's just get right into it. So this is Fog of War. You can't really tell, but this is all there is. So what I have here is I have three blocks of, of different sizes and I have some, some goblin units just to kind of show you what but how that would work. And then over here I have another board, but it's not like flat like this one is. This one's actually part of the board. And then this one is like the boards we spawn in, like the ones I showed you in the previous videos, the ones that I typically use. But I wanted to make sure you saw how both work so that you can decide which one you want to do. If you want to do like the whole make your board flat and part of your actual board like this one, or if you want to just bring boards in like I typically do. Both work, you just have to do them differently. So the first thing I want to point out, let's just go ahead and show you Fog of War actually. So if you're the game master and you put Fog of War down and you do it the same way you do the uh, the hiddens, you just go to Fog of War and you draw a box. Draw it over whatever you want the Fog of War to be part of. Then you right click, make sure hide GM pointer that way people that way your players can't see where you are while you're messing with things in the fog of war and hide objects cuz clearly you want your objects hidden now the other two are the parts of the fog of war that are still not working as intended or so i think they're not working as intended from what they say they're supposed to do so the first one is gray out visited it always grays out the visited area and it says objects will be hidden in an area they're not it doesn't work that way and then read high objects does work but it's a pain in the ass so don't work don't worry about it and i'll show that later in the video as well so let's go ahead and swap over to uh, this is purple player so i have here all five of my players this is theirs this is what i typically do i have them all set up to deal with fog of war as i have been using fog of war in my past few sessions now how you do that is you get your fog of war you get it set the way i showed you then you come over here to your character. You go to toggles. You have a reveal fog of war and ignore fog of war. So ignore fog of war makes it where they're always visible no matter where they are in fog of war. You want that checked so the players don't lose track of their characters. Whether or not it's revealing doesn't matter. Just make sure they don't lose track of their own characters. Then the other one is reveal fog of war. And that's pretty simple. It just lets them reveal fog of war. And then once you do that, you'll have a, a new option up here called the revealer. And you can decide which what, which color it's revealing for. So this is revealing for the purple player. So only the purple player sees what he reveals with this with this um with this model. The range, I usually set my range to somewhere around 1.5 or 2.2. It will vary depending on the type of map you're using. If the if the hallways are like skinnier, then you want it to be somewhere closer to 1.5. If it's a big bulky map, 2.2 should be fine. 
the reveal height keep around one point like the one point area this is um this deals with like actual height and typically it won't matter because no matter what as long as your um model or the player's model comes in contact with something of it like it could come in contact with its feet it shows the whole thing anyways so keep the height around like 1.2 the fov decides if you want because like it's a really cool idea but it's not there yet where you want it to be so the fov actually decides if you want field of if you want the field of view so you can make it where your player only has like a field of view depending on where it's you know where where it's looking and you can control it's the, the angle at which it's looking so you can actually make it i can make this model because you can see clearly his head's facing this way i can make his field of view this way and i can make it an angle like a cone and he can only see the cone in front of him and while that sounds like a really cool idea for one there's no way for me to decide where walls are yet. The fog of war. This is a big thing. I really wish they do. I wish they add in the, the ability for me to control. Like I can designate to the fog of war. Hey, this is a wall. When my player looks at this wall, it, it it's vision stops, but I can't do that yet and until I can do that. This is basically useless because I like you would think, Oh, he has 60 feet of dark vision. I'll give him 60 foot range based on this map so you do the math and you angle it and you do it perfectly and yeah that's about 60 feet yeah cool he can see six feet now but the problem is he's seeing through fucking walls halfway across the map to somewhere else because it's a tiny little hallway and that doesn't work so sadly that doesn't that it's it's a cool idea and hopefully they're going to implement more things to make it better but at the moment just leave it at 360 so they can see all around themselves and keep the uh, the offset at zero and the reveal range is about 2.2. So 2.2 will look something like this. Oh, let me go ahead and show you something. So um, before I get into that, you'll see what 2.2 looks like. But um, So if I do this, which I just ran into a block that I have in there. Uh, <laughs> so you see as I move him through this area, nothing is getting revealed. That's because he's lifted off the area. So whenever you're revealing something... For your player, make you pick up the model, and then you hold a right click. And that'll put him to the ground, and then you'll slowly slide him through the area. And see now he's re it's revealing it for him. And look the block, which was about to get into next. So the problem, the big issue with that the, the, the fog of war was having that I don't think it's having anymore. I've done a few tests on different models, different trees, and some buildings. If you want to do all that kinds of three D stuff, walls in particular was the test I, I did the most of. It seems as though it's working perfectly fine now. And almost any 3D object will immediately be revealed and work just so long as you have the settings I was talking about. Hide GM pointer, hide object. Do not, don't, don't touch these two. They really, they fuck up everything. <laughs> like I, I'll show you why rehide fucks up everything, but gray out literally does, doesn't work. Um, over here, reveal that block. Come over here, reveal that block. So yeah, so the blocks stay revealed and they work just fine as the Fog of War works. So long as you keep it the way you're supposed to. Now the way Rehide is supposed to work, if I go here and turn Rehide on, it rehides the objects, which you think that's cool. So now they don't know, like maybe my party goes in and like they see a bunch of goblins in the room, which I can do that actually. Let's go ahead and head to where those goblins are. Where'd I put those goblins? Here they are. So yeah, he walks into the room. Maybe it's a druid, turns into a spider, crawls into the room, spots the goblins. Okay, I know where the goblins are. Comes back. They can't see the goblins anymore, but they saw them. Now they can explain to their party, hey, I found goblins. And so you can move the goblins around or do whatever you need to do while the party is doing what they do. Because of course the goblins are going to stay perfectly still. They're going to change where they are. But the problem with that comes when you get into combat. Because if you go not very far off, like, look, just picking him up makes it where you can't see it anymore. <laughs> see, this is a problem. Because if you're in the middle of combat, you would be like, in the room with the goblins. You know where the fucking goblins are. But the, the rehide thing keeps 
doing this. And you could turn it off and turn it back on and do all that, but it just seems like a big hassle to me. So I typically just leave it off. But now I have to actually see the objects again. And then they stay in. And typically what I do is if they go, if they do that kind of thing, where they send the spider, like, druid spider in to go see the goblins, she gets to see them, and I leave them alone perfectly still, just the way they are. And when they come back to the room, when they go in, I change them. I say, oh, well, the goblins actually have moved since then. This one's here. This one's over here. And these two are at the door because they thought they heard something. Or maybe they didn't hear anything, so they're over here asleep. Or however you want to do it. D&D, &D, you can do how Live your life. Um, but this makes it a lot easier. And this is why the rehide thing is pretty much just redundant. I wouldn't recommend using it. It's just going to cause you more pain than, there, than, than, than good. So go ahead. So this way, so the like what tabletop the issue it had with the fog of war, the, at least the old issue, was that objects like this would immediately break and either not be seen, no matter what you do, that your player would just not see it, or it would show it, but only half of it, or it would show all of it, but it would but it wouldn't show like parts around it, so it looks like it like so it would show the roof of the house. That's working, or it would show one wall, but not the other two walls, and it was really buggy. But it really seems like they've gotten their shit together, and they really got it working now. Because, as far as I can tell from everything I tried, it's working just fine. So that's a good thing. So, Fog of War, so that's a basic sense of how to use Fog of War. Make sure your uh, player model is the correct model color. Make sure the reveal height is around 1.2, the reveal range, depending on, like I said, this is what reveal range 2.2 looks like. It's about that big. I I think it works just fine. See, he's, he's combing the room. Look at there. Now he sees the entire room. And I, I'm going over the walls, but if I was in the DM, because typically what I would do is I control my player. So if I was here, I could control it a bit better so he only gets revealed of this room. That is the door. And boom. So now he sees this room. But no other player can see this room. So I'll show how that looks. That's the wrong thing. So if you go to purple. This is everything that this character right here. Dredgen Fordwin. This is everything he has seen so far. But if I go over here. And let's just go to green. Which would be him. Who would I put as green? I didn't put anyone as green. <laughs> let's go to blue. <laughs> I forgot I have a new mat. I have a new table. I'm still fucking around with my color changes because like I had a player who used to be teal. Now he has to be green because that's all I got. But not the point. So we'll go to blue. So the blue player. Oh, come on now. And now he gets to see the things that he saw. But if we go over here and change it again. Wrong color. This time we'll do red. Red player can't see shit. And it's a really cool idea because that's this way the player can go forth. He can examine the rooms. He can sneak around like a rogue or a druid or someone who typically does. They get they get information. They can bring it back, and I have them describe what they've seen to the players. I don't describe it because they they've seen it. They don't need me to tell the other players how it looks. So that's when these rings come into play, because typically how I'll do it is because a big of an issue. A bit of an issue that comes into this. Let me go ahead and change back to uh, Game Master. There we go. That block keeps moving. So a bit of the issue that comes with this, and then this you reset the fog of war right here. Just press the reset button. And that changes that makes it for everybody. Like if I go back to the purple player, the one who saw all of it, he can't see any of it anymore. That's how you reset the fog of war if you ever, if you were wondering. In this case the reset but the giant reset fog button wasn't big enough for anyone it does exactly what it says um so what was i doing i got lost this is why i should edit videos i'm not editing this video i, I put too much effort into the other one i'm not doing it again so say they're moving as a group this is where it becomes it becomes a bit of a hassle and i found a workaround for this because tip like what you would do you get every model. Here we go. Got everybody in a group. Not to put the damn thing down. Here we go. We're all in a group. We're all moving. 
We're all pushing through. But if I go through, if I go back, like if I go to this and say, okay, this is what they seen. And then I go here and I check individual characters. Like, let's see what the what the blue player is saw. Okay. Let's see what the purple player is seeing. And you see, it's a bit different for each one. And they actually haven't seen the entire, like, see, the, the, he's right here. He's right next to Trick. But he can't see what Trick has seen. Or Clem is halfway sticking into the place. He can't see what he's seen either. And so what I typically would do, what I've done now to help with this issue, is so we reset Fog of War. I created these little circles. So if Trick is the Druid, turns into the spider and goes and it like the Trick, uh, so that would be this color. Like she wants to sneak into the place, so I would use this marker. To go in. Oh, she spotted the she spotted the goblins. Look at that! Woo! And she came back. So now if you go over here and you change to well, I can't change her color, but it's white. I almost forgot. I keep forgetting that I can't because I don't have their colors. Ah, oh, it's I have so much work to do with this table before it's ready for me to actually do a session on. But I want to use this table so bad, so I just keep break, I keep loading it up because it's such a cooler table than mine. So we'll say red because that's Clem's color, and I have that one. So he goes in, turns into a spider, even though he can't. <laughs> I know my players watch these videos. They're he's like, I'm not the druid, I'm the monk. I know, but it'll be okay. If I go over here, he gets all the he gets all those, comes back, change color, change the red. He's seen what. The mark that the marker is saying so this this helps me because for one these are a bit easier to kind of navigate through they don't knock things over as much and i can control them while keeping their models right where i want them like hey say so just leave your model right there i'll do this and then say they move as a group what i do is i have the dm marker and this revealer is you just reveal it to all there you go simple as that you make it the same as everything else reveal range this one's about 1.9 they vary 1.9, 2.2, whatever you want. Keep it in that area. Anything bigger than that, and you'll start revealing more than you want. Go to DM marker. You see, I'm on, I'm, I'm on the red player right now, so this is everything the red player can see. Now, if I change to purple player, he's also seen it. But he still hasn't seen the goblins that the red player saw earlier. So this is what I do. The party's moving as a group. I just take my marker. Say, which way are you guys going? Okay, that way. And I, I clear it out for them. Then once I've cleared the entire room out, I give them back control of their models. Like, hey, move your models wherever you want in the room. Just don't leave the room. <laughs> about that need something to drink so that's basic sense everything you know about fog of war i find it incredibly more useful than say the hidden blocks for one reason in particular say so i delete this let's go ahead and get rid of that the way i had to do say so if i did the same thing with this map with the hidden blocks out of fog of war i have to come here draw blocks and I'm on the purple character, but it doesn't matter. You get the point. <laughs> get to that. So I have to come here. I have to draw blocks. One for that room. And then here we go. Okay. And then let's go over here. And, okay. And then and I'm, I'm more meticulous than this. I would draw each one for each individual. Like, so this is a room. So there we go. And then that's a room. There we go. And then that's part of the little area. So we'll do that one by itself. And then I'd spend all day doing that. Like at least 15, 20 minutes just putting blocks down to get the entire place. So for one, it saves me time. And for and the second thing, if you do the fog of war. So even if I do the blocks, if I put a bunch of blocks here. And then go to like purple and the blocks aren't showing up the way they're supposed to. That's a bug someone was telling me about, and I can't believe it, but I'll, we'll worry about that later. But you can see the blocks, barely, but you can see them. They're supposed to be solid. wonder if I can fix that real quick. 
I broke it. <laughs> there we go. That's how it's supposed to look. So you see the blocks. And like if I had it all mapped out with blocks, you would see just a bunch of blocks everywhere. And the players would know the layout of the map based on my blocks. They wouldn't know what's in there or what, or what the room is, but they know there's a room there. So it makes hidden rooms kind of impossible. It makes like the, um, what is it? The absence of knowing. They know the layout. They know which way to go. They know what's a dead end, what isn't a dead end. So that, that was always a problem I had with this. So when they in introduced Fog of War, I was all for it. And that's why I'm trying to tell you guys, definitely use it. It's definitely worked. It may be buggy, but it I think it does the job way better than the, the hidden object does. Now, on to this. If you see, I have the Fog of War already placed on this thing. It's just below it. And that's because... Off of purple. Why am I always on purple? You go to here. See, the fog of war is on there, but it's below it, and that's because of the height of it. So, if we're using a table like this, there we go. We'll just put it like that. If you're doing the table, then the fog of war height can stay at zero because it's it counts the table as zero. That's the base of it. But if you're doing, um. Like these things, I can't remember the name the word for it right now. It's, it's leaving me. These maps, so you have to raise it because you have to raise it higher than the table. So I'd right click, go to fog height, and you come over here and you look, and you'll see when it when it does it. Raise, and then like I'm I'm not looking at the number at all. I'm looking at this. Boom. So 1.88 for this one. It changes depending on how big the map you because you want to. This one's small, so you make it. The size of the entire thing so that you can you know it's bigger for all your players to see but now i come to it and i come here and it works and i come over here change color doesn't matter what color i go to and now you see the entire thing's filled out except for that i don't know what like i said it's buggy it'll work <laughs> where's dredgen there's dredgen come here dredgen You see when I come up, because it's like a slant, it's taking those away. That won't matter, because as long as I'm over it, like I said, it won't do it. But you hold down the right click, and he's revealing the fog the same way he would on that map. Works the same exact way. No difference. You just have to raise the fog height a bit. So let me see. So, recap. I showed you how these things work. This is like the little tip that I have for how I deal with Fog of War for when when the party is moving together, or if you want, or if one goes off alone, but you don't want them to control their model, and you want to take those little things, you can just show them what they're seeing. That's why I have these sergeants, and they're really easy to make. Just in case you didn't know, you do it the same way you do the models. You just do it on these markers. I can't even remember where I got these things from, but. Anything will work if you want to go to objects here, components, and then go to blocks, and then red square. There. This works the same way. You can change the color of it. You can toggle. Let's see. Toggle reveal fog of war. Revealer for the red color. Reveal range. Why is it so far over to the damn right so I can't see it? There we go. Reveal range. That's too big. Or that two point. About 1.9. Real height, that's fine. That's fine, that's fine. Over here. It's not working. Why is it not working? Is that because it's a different block? Hmm. Sure, why it's not working? I know it's not. I'm dumb. I'm on the purple color again. I never said I was intelligent. I don't know why you guys are listening to me. I make I, I give terrible videos and terrible advice. Don't listen to anything this video says. <laughs> I'm gonna be on that purple color every time. God, I'm thinking about maybe I should edit this video. But yeah, any object works. You don't have to use these little circle things. Please do not comment below. Hey, where did you get the circle things? I want I need, I can't find those. You don't need the circle things. Use whatever you want. <laughs> I just found these. These are what I use. So, I showed you how to put it on each individual character. 
how fog of war works how to make how to create the fog of war you literally just drag it over what you want to show what you want to hide i mean and boom you're done that's literally all you have to do <laughs> fog of war is very simple to set up it works with almost every 3d once you get past this size right here it can bug out but it only did once i made a fucking huge wall and it bugged and it bugged out on me once but i reset it and it didn't bug out my big bug out on me the second time so it can bug out but it might not but when i mean you shouldn't ever be doing anything bigger than this like this is fucking huge in terms of like you know 3d managers and player base Oh, she got like a giant dragon in there, but in which case, I mean, come on, let's be honest. If it's, if it's that big of a fucking dragon, why is it in Fog of War? It should be visible from anywhere on the fucking continent if it's that fucking huge. <laughs> so, I think that's everything. I showed you how to deal with the height problem if, you, if you're using boards. I think I did it. Yeah, Fog of War map. So that's an easy how-to tutorial of how Fog of War works, how to avoid some of the bugs, like I said. Don't mess around with rehide objects because it, it just it, it works technically, but it's really shit. And the gray out visit thing objects will be hidden in an area that just doesn't work. I don't know what's going on. It just doesn't work. Fog height is for when you want to, you know, control the fog height. And as long as you have these two pointers clicked, you'll be fine. Just these two click, these two not clicked, fog height or whatever it is to be, like I said, you want it. To at least make sure you watch the map not the number until it's covered up completely and you're good don't go too far over because like technically this is covered up but it's not covered up let's look look at that gap okay look, look at it if i go to red player i as the red player can see everything that that fog of war is supposed to be covering up like just make sure you're not doing this so make sure as a g like as when you're when you're prepping your maps don't lower, don't raise your fog of war too high, or this will happen. I've done that a few times. It's very sad. Your players can see everything. But I think that's it. I'm gonna clean my board up now. I have to actually start prepping for my next session. But uh, I hope this video helped. Uh, I will be live streaming later today. So if you see this video now on the day I, I released it, check into Twitch sometime around. 2 p.m., 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I think, is the correct one. So 2, 3 p.m., I should be live. I'm going to be trying the, trying out the new Terraria stuff. So come in, join, say hi, ask a question about, hey, the Fog of War video helped me out, but I still have another question. Fine with me. That's what I'm there for. Ask whatever questions you need. Um, or just come chat. Where you, There's usually about six or seven of us in there just talking. So you can come and like, chat with them or chat with me. Works out that way. Uh, links in the description of my Twitch and my Twitter. There's no link to a mod workshop this time. I don't have to worry about linking the damn mod. Ah, that's refreshing. This is just a tutorial video on Fog of War. So, that's a thing. So, the links to my Twitter on in my Twitch, like always, they will be in the description below. Uh, comment below. If you have any questions, I'll try to get to it. Ask on Twitter if you have any questions. I, I can get to that a bit easier. The, comment se the comments... On YouTube I don't know why they changed the update to work this way but it is very annoying and very tedious for me to get to things I will eventually get to them if you ask on YouTube I'm not saying don't comment but if you really want your answer if you want your answer quickly Twitter is the way to go <laughs> um I think that's everything so I'm, I'm live streaming later Hope everyone is doing all right. Sorry the video took way longer than I said. I said Saturday, but like I said, the update was going to come. I didn't want my video to go out of date two days after I said it. And it would have went out of date because this is definitely changes. Because my video was talking about how you can't do 3D objects at all because it's buggy as shit. It's not buggy as shit anymore. <laughs> you can do 3D objects now. Um, But I think that's everything. Thanks for watching. And I'll uh, see you guys next week. Comment below what you think the next video should be because I'm running out of ideas.